actual employer is Kentucky Animaworks, which uh, I'm always curious who knows what Kentucky Animaworks is. So, yeah, that's about typical. Uh, so, Kentucky Animaworks is actually a uh, nonprofit, but it works in concert with uh, Metro Wolf. And we are what um, we're called the Workforce Investment Board. But basically, any type of workforce training programs, as well as the career centers uh, that Metro Wolf does, fall under Kentucky Animaworks. Um, so, uh, you'd be surprised how much work that it works to around the city. Uh, me in particular, uh, my role is the sector strategy coordinator of IT. Basically means that any IT programs that Tech Universe uh, runs uh, falls under my purview. Uh, and that primarily means the Go Build program, as well as I most of my time on that night. Uh, and then also I'm going to introduce you to the Tech Global program, which is so new, it was just announced on Thursday, and we don't have a logo yet, and I couldn't resist being there. But that did not ask me. I actually believe you know, we'll get into the work, so I understand. But, um, you know So, um, anyway, uh, today I just wanted to kind of uh, introduce you uh, what the Google program is, because many you may not know what it is. Uh, some of you may know what it is, and you can learn more about how it works and the success of it. Um, and then just kind of share with you this community resource, what it is, where it's going, uh, and kind of make sure some news, and then also talk about the school new program that's coming soon. So, uh, without further ado, uh, the Good Google program, uh, basically it started technically in 2013, but it really got going in May of 2015, when Kentucky Works got awarded a $2.9 million grant from what was called the Workforce Innovation Fund. Uh, it was a grant given to a bunch of cities, like 28, 29 cities, to take innovative approaches to get people on work. Uh, Google, Kentucky Works, uh, chose to take the software development route. It's the only one of the grants given out that the technology route. And uh, basically, our whole goal is to uh, address uh, software development skills gap here in the city and try to get more people into those high paying good jobs that are very much in demand in the city. Um, so, the program started very small. Uh, the original class only had 22 students in it, with the graduating class of, I think, seven. Uh, not fantastic results. Uh, but you may remember in 2015, a gentleman by the name of President Obama came to town to talk about something called the Tech Hire Initiative, which was this thing he was pushing to get more uh, people into tech in the city. And in particular, he dropped the name to Google. And uh, yeah, things kind of exploded after that. So we went from those tiny 22 person classes to a full room of 250 people, uh, maxed out, could not logistically do more. So, uh, good little program absolutely exploded, and ever since that first class after Obama came to town, we have maintained a waiting list uh, that has quickly grown to over a year long. Uh, over 1,200 people are currently on the list, and uh, it's grown. So, uh, what is the good little program? What's the model look like? Um, the whole idea behind the program is it is non traditional learning. It's not like a college class, um, we're not here to lecture to you. We understand that development, uh, learning software development, is very self-motivating. You have to be able to teach yourself in general. The project you're going to be on, the language you're going to be learning, you have to do research, you know, all that stuff that you all know about. Um, and so we very much structure this program around giving accountability, resources, and guidance to the participants uh, so that they can make themselves successful. So basically, uh, the way this uh, comes together is that um, we require everybody, so first of all, the program is 12 weeks in length, and that's for one course. Everybody can come back for a second course, and then another course after that, and uh, And the whole idea is that uh, over the 12 weeks, they have an online curriculum in the group. We use something called Treehouse. Uh, they do uh, videos recorded by professional developers, uh, and have quizzes, challenges, things like that to work through. So everybody has to complete that course. Uh, they also have to come into class. And this is where the real magic happens. Like, there's tons of online learning. Anybody can learn to be a developer. They just have to go find some resources out there, some free, some of day. But there's actually been research on this and like the success rates of people that try to teach themselves coding on their own with the online resources is single digit which it's like three uh, percent. and the main reason is it's too easy just to set it aside. I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow, and then three years later you're still trying to learn. Developer. Google brings accountability to that. We have a set curriculum, a set timeline, and we also bring guidance by having uh, mentors. 
through our mentors, uh, of which I know there's at least two in the room, so the rest of the others that I haven't seen yet. Um, mentors are tons of volunteers. They have development experience, they work for six months to 20, 30, 40 years of experience, and they're there to be guides. 100% um, volunteer, they put time in it, they come into class in the evenings, and help people understand the curriculum, work on their projects, and just uh, what it takes to be best in class and understand what it means to be a developer. Um, and then on top of that, they also require everybody to uh, attend networking events. So, you know, community no matters. So, get everybody out of the community and go to meetups and uh, climb, you know, other classes and stuff like that so they can get to know other people and learn from other people. And our whole goal is to bring all these things together and help people get their first job as a junior developer. Had very good success with that, uh, which makes me feel a little bit ahead of myself. But the whole idea is that we're trying to build this community of uh, We have people get involved, we try and stay involved with our students. Uh, the mentors are coming from local companies and getting involved with the, uh, the students. And it's really built a strong community. We have our own internal side channel where everybody's talking and helping each other out. Uh, people get involved in open source projects through various groups around town. And basically, we just try to keep people, uh, or employers engaged uh, through announcements and graduation concerns and interviewing events and uh, have them send out people to mentor in class. And uh, a lot of them also do like speaking engagements and stuff like that. And really, that's what we're hoping to build is just a strong community of tech, uh, you know, learning and advancing the um, So, our partners, uh, we're very proud of it. Uh, we count uh, 362 jobs as of this morning uh, that have gotten uh, jobs in tech. So these are development positions, <coughs> QA, stuff like that. We're not counting like your base level call center support stuff. I mean, these are you know, high tech jobs that we count for this. Uh, over 150 companies, most of them local, have hired from us. Uh, many of them are coming back for second, third, fourth hires. And uh, we're definitely seeing that, uh, that rate of hire increase. So, uh, I think that really speaks to companies being more and more open to non-traditional hires. Uh, many of our students do actually have degrees, uh, but they're often in non-extended degrees. So we've got lots of you know, arts majors, things like that. Uh, you know, these are people that have been working in customer service, and, uh, you know, very uh, or like uh, customer service, retail, things like that, uh, and are wanting to build a career for themselves. And uh, we're very proud to help them. Um, each cohort has about 350 people in it, and that includes both uh, about 150 incoming new students, as well as 150 plus that are returning for the second course, uh, which might be in a packet language like C Sharp, PHP, uh, Java, JavaScript, things like that. Uh, we have, like I said, over 1,000 people on the waiting list, and uh, we've had over 150 different uh, individuals volunteer and mentor. We're always looking for more, again, the interest, always having to talk more about. Um, our graduates have found success in software development, design, uh, QA, project management, uh, business and, uh, analysis, uh, data analytics, you know, all kinds of tech-related jobs. Um, we have three different paths kind of program. We have an application development path, uh, a more data-oriented path, which is SQL and Python, and then a more design-oriented track, which is still pretty heavy JavaScript and the uh, great app um, and I guess I jumped ahead of myself, so but basically, you know, helping people establish new lives for themselves. Uh, one of my favorite success stories, we have a 15-year-old uh, uh, single mother who basically had no job for most of her life and just threw herself into this, taught herself coding with, through the Good Little Program, and uh, she's now working on a job making, uh, I think she's making about six or 7000 a year, and working in DevOps and in development. Uh, just love it. Absolutely, put herself into it, made a life for herself with it. So, uh, the future of the program, uh, the grant actually, unfortunately, is ending um, later this year, in two months. Uh, but we have a plan going forward. So, um, we're actually going to be partnering with JCTC, and I've been very busy uh, preparing the announcement, which may come by the end of today, uh, but no later than tomorrow, uh, that we'll be having this partnership. And the whole idea going forward is that uh, we still want these classes to be 
uh, as accessible as possible to the so we can make this career changing uh, choice. And so in partnering with JCTC, we're actually going to uh, secure funds uh, through several local uh, organizations and uh, we'll be able to help pay for uh, cost of class for those most in need. So low income families, veterans, uh, displaced workers, things like that. So we'll be able to go through JCTC, take code level courses, and if they want to continue beyond that, they get like an associate's degree uh, or like a certificate or something in the program. Uh, so it's going to remain a nonprofit program, you know, 501 uh, remain independent, just partnering with JCTC to offer those classes for the And uh, you know, everything's going to remain roughly as is. There's going to be three house curriculum and, uh, and projects that they do, portfolio that they build by the end of And uh, yeah, definitely uh, excited about the future of that. So, um, you know, I know I'll leave it to the time for questions at the end of the day, but uh, that pretty much wraps up what I have for Google. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was Google. So uh, there have only been a, a few articles about this lately. There's one Courier Journal uh, on Thursday morning. Uh, if you were paying attention to the news, though, uh, Jamie Dynam, the CEO of J.P. Morgan and Chase, uh, came to town and made an announcement with uh, Metro United Way, Metro Networks, and some other partners <coughs> about uh, what's called the Advancing Cities grant. And so J.P. Morgan and Chase uh, announced that uh, six cities on the grant and they chose to come to Louisville to make the announcement that Louisville is going to be one of those. Um, so uh, this grant, again, was applied for in uh, partnership with Kentucky uh, Works, Metro United Way, some other local partners. And what Kentucky Works is going to be doing is developing a program very much like the Google, but oriented towards entry level tech skills. So the whole idea behind this program, uh, we're going to be using So uh, the whole idea behind this grant is that it's focused on six communities. Uh, so we've got Russell, Portland, Phoenix Hill, Smoke Town, Shelby Park, and South Central. Uh, the majority of those are in Russell, where this, if you're familiar, uh, those are the most community. Those are very impoverished, uh, disadvantaged neighborhoods. And so the whole idea behind this grant is to help bring some job skills training courses, as well as things like financial literacy, uh, and some community building programs really help these, uh, these communities kind of elevate some of the goals into higher paying positions and uh, kind of work on improving those areas. Um, so Contending Networks in particular got a $285,000 grant over three years uh, to teach basic tech skills. So we're going to be doing the workforce part of this grant. And we're targeting 300 people uh, over the next three years to, uh, to gain some sort of tech support position or infrastructure or whatever having help in tech positions, which are very often like office type positions that require a tech heavy component. You know, somebody that knows a lot of Excel or how to log into a server and things like that. Things like that. Um, and the way the program's going to work is we're using uh, Google's IT support professional curriculum. Uh, if you're familiar with CompTIA A plus and F plus certifications, this is Google's answer to both of those. So the Google curriculum goes through um, how to do online security, operating systems, uh, peer repair and, and maintenance, things like that. Uh, basic network security, user security, all those kinds of things. Uh, and there's quizzes and challenges and whole person will go over the course of about six months. Uh, and it's going to be combined just like the local in-person classes to kind of reinforce that, add on some additional knowledge, help them get ready for tests, things like that. Uh, and it's going to be supported by mentors. And again, our whole goal here is to, to get these folks jobs and uh, help improve the community. We're always looking to get more people involved, whether that's uh, mentoring in the program, whether that's Google or Tech Global, uh, or hiring. We always want to encourage people to, to interview these folks, give them a chance to uh, uh, see what it's like to interview and hopefully get a chance. And so uh, if you're a hiring manager or anything like that, always have to talk about what's, uh, what's involved with that, how we get connected with these people, get resumes. Um, and yeah, I think that's uh, about that. So, um, it's been a little bit quick, but I'm sure for about a couple minutes. But uh, I'll have good questions. If you guys have any questions about what's going on in the city, please hurry. And how do you program that either was or is operating at a public university? Is that really a test or is 
Yeah, so the question was about uh, development of global partnership. So that's not something we advertise too much. Just, uh, we, our waiting list is already so strong that we don't really need to advertise a lot. But yes, we do actually have a partnership with development. It is separate from the JCTC bank going on. Uh, development is offering classes through their community education program, uh, or I'm sorry, career development program. And uh, if you are a development student, alumni, uh, and actually they're offering it just community at large as well. Uh, that is a program we partner with them because they were looking to add on to their current skills. Uh, very hands-on program. So in their, their computer science department, they're very theoretical, it's a great program, but it really doesn't get you a lot of the hands-on program. So they wanted to offer this as an option for people that want that additional work. So that partnership will continue. Uh, and if somebody wants to do a development program, they're welcome to uh, reach out there. And, uh,
the rule, uh, basically what midterm involves is a 12-week commitment uh, for two hours, one day a week, in the evenings. So classes start at 6 p.m. Most of our holes are working, so this is something they do after they uh, finish the day done. Uh, they run from 6 to 8 p.m. one day a week. So for example, you might volunteer for the JavaScript class, uh, which may be offered on you know, Tuesday or Thursday. You would say, I want to do the JavaScript class on Tuesdays, and you would come once a week. Uh, and then, basically, in those classes, you're there to help out uh, with, uh, basically, the adapter. So that could mean helping with the projects, maybe they're struggling with the curriculum, maybe they just want to know what the daily life of the developer is. Uh, that might be a conversation that you have. Uh, so you'll just help them out each week uh, in that class. Uh, the classroom setting is for setting, so that it will be for 20 to 40 students in the room, and we're for three to six members in the room. So, you know, you may be roughly an eight to one uh, setup. So you're not the only one in the room. Uh, you're not solely responsible for the entire classroom with those mentors. And uh, you don't even have to be an expert. Uh, we'll take somebody with six months of experience if I think that they are capable of helping out. Because they'll be in a room with somebody who has 10 years of experience. And you know, there's value in both those perspectives. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can either contact me or just go to Google.org. And there's just a quick little form you fill out Uh, as far as Tech Global, uh, we're still planning it. It literally just got announced uh, on Thursday, and we didn't even know until very shortly before that we were going to win it. Uh, so we're still designing exactly how the program is going to work, but it's going to be roughly the same. Uh, it's going to be an in person class. I think we're likely to have both daytime classes and evening classes at this point. And uh, if you're more interested in you know, general tech, uh, you know, tech support, and system administration, infrastructure, uh, you know, e plus, net plus kind of stuff. Um, those are the kind of skills we'll be looking for there. And it's going to be roughly the same thing. Uh, roughly a couple hours a week uh, in a classroom with several other mentors. Uh, although these are probably going to be smaller classes, uh, maybe 15 people with a couple mentors in them. And uh, we'll also have an online community slide that we'll use to go through a little bit of tech rule, uh, which can save them in classroom. Yeah, I would love to scale up. It is pretty much a matter of resources. Um, so the JCTC partnership is going to be a revenue share style agreement, although it is a very, JCTC, to their credit, has been very generous. But that's kind of basically turning around um, like 98% of all tuition, taking it for good little courses to us for our expenses. So we're going to try and keep everything level set for the first one, and then as we think as well, we'll be able to scale up account. Uh, it's that Thornton's that's right there on Broadway. 
already in first than it is. If you look behind it, there's scaffolding for a new building. Um, so that is JCTC's new building, the building solely for tech oriented stuff. So programming, uh, infrastructure, and advanced manufacturing. Um, we've actually been uh, told that we would be moved into that space once the construction is completed this year. I might have missed it, so forgive me. Is this going to be sort of accredited through the same like Coursera uh, IT support through Google, uh, or is it going to be like a separate? For Tech Google. Tech Google, yeah. Will be yeah. a separate Tech Google, will be JCTC? So, uh, so Tech Google is actually independent from the JCTC angle. The JCTC only applies to Google. Okay. Uh, so on the Google side, um, you will, all of our classes will uh, earn you credit towards a degree. Uh, so we're actually going to set up a recommended pathway that will be a what's called computational thinking, which JCTC and I both agree that that's a terrible name for the course. Uh, but it's basically introduction to programming. Like it's, you don't actually write code, but it's like pseudo code and logic. Uh, uh, it's also meant to be object oriented programming, things like that, in theory. <laughs> and then they'll go into the global course. Um, and actually, we're going to on skills, take two of those courses, and then we're also trying to develop a project oriented course that's kind of a capstone to the global experience. Uh, and all four of those courses, the computational thinking front end, the back end course, and the project course, will be 12 credit hours and earn you a programming certificate. And all that will apply towards an associate's degree in computer information technology. And we are also working with uh, UofL, JCTC, Metro Global, Tech and Works are all working with UofL to ensure that all that credit will transfer over if somebody wants to go on to a degree with CIS or they. Uh, and to Tech Global, uh, so at the moment there's no uh, articulation agreement with JCPC in place, but uh, that's a conversation that's happening, and we are hoping to secure college credit for anyone who is Tech Global as well. Um, at the moment, the, the credential, the, the Google credential that's provided, which is fairly new, but uh, there's some press around it, and companies have definitely started looking at that credential, much the same as they must have been.
suppose not as much as I would like. Um, we don't really focus on freelance just because it's a very challenging thing to get into with no previous experience. Um, so kind of not the resources, for example. Um, Sue here has actually given a talk on becoming the CEO of you uh, to the local students. Um, and um, you know, if somebody expresses interest in that, we can certainly talk about it, offer some guidance on things like that. We had to go that route, but it's not really something we kind of focus on. Um, but I would certainly get into well, if you want to share thoughts or anything like that. Yeah, I think Salesforce coming along against members of 